Hi everyone, it's Mr. Machado here. I'm very happy to be back on our channel, posting new videos. I hope everybody had a great break. I hope you stayed at home, you spent some time with your family, but I hope you also took some time to yourself to relax, to watch TV, to play some fun games, and do whatever else you like to do on your free time. I'm very excited because today's video is going to be a little different. We are going to be talking about vocabulary, and you already know that vocabulary means important words that I need to know to be able to talk or sound like an expert on a certain topic. Today we are going to be talking about math. The topic of today's video is addition and subtraction. You have already learned all these words. We are just going to do a quick review because from now on, I want to make sure that you can sound like a real mathematician when you are talking about addition and subtraction. Before we jump into addition and subtraction, we have to make sure that we remember the concept of place value. Place value is something that you have been learning since first and second grade. You use that every single time you do math and you might not even realize that. Let's take a look at this number, for example, 153. If I look at this number, I see that I have three different digits. Every single one of those numbers have a different value. I know that the number five is bigger than three and it's bigger than one, but the value of the number five is not the biggest value in that number. The number five is on the tens place. So if I count by 10 five times, the number I have is 50. So the value of that number five is 50 because of the position that that number is. Let's take a look at the number three. That number three, it's on the ones place. So that means that that number represents three single units and that's it. So that's the smallest value on that number. Now let's take a look at the number one. The number one, it's in the hundreds place. So that means that that number doesn't represent one single unit. That number represents 100. Therefore, the number one is the number that has the biggest value. So every time you look at a number, remember a number is composed by hundreds, tens, and ones. The smallest value always stays to the right. So if you keep jumping to the left, the value of the number gets bigger and bigger. Another word we should review before we talk about addition and subtraction is the word equation. The word equation comes very often when we're talking about math. Equation simply means a number sentence. Just like in grammar, a sentence has to have a complete thought. When it comes to math, a number sentence has to have certain things as well. An equation needs numbers, a math symbol, and it needs an equal sign. Think about the word equation, equal sign. An equation also needs different signs, different symbols. Those signs represent different math operations. And I'm not talking about an operation where someone has to get something fixed on their bodies. No, I'm talking about math operations. And that, as you know, there are four different types of operations when it comes to math. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Today, we are going to be talking about addition and subtraction. So let's jump right in. Addition is a noun. It's a name of one of the math operations. The verb, the action word would be to add. To add simply means to combine, to put things together. On the example we have right here, one plus one equals two. So the symbol, the sign that we use for addition is the plus sign. That's another important word for us to remember. When I look at an addition equation, I can identify those numbers with some specific terms. For example, when I'm adding two different numbers, I'm combining them, they are called addends. An addend, it's a number that's being added to another one, that's being combined. So both numbers, they go by the same name. They're both called addends. The result of adding numbers together, it's called the sum. So the sum is the answer to an addition problem is the result, is what you get at the end after you put those numbers together. So let's talk about subtraction now. Subtraction is a noun. It's the name of one of the math operations that we know. The verb, the action word would be to subtract. And when I'm subtracting something, I'm simply just taking things away. I'm taking one number from the other. The symbol, the sign that I use for subtraction is called the minus sign. It's called minus. We just learned that the answer to an addition problem is called the sum. So what about subtraction? Well, the answer to a subtraction problem is called the difference. 
after you subtracted, after you took something away from another number and you found the result, that's called the difference. Another word that we need to talk about before we practice adding and subtracting is the word regroup. Regroup is a verb, it's an action word. To regroup means to trade amounts of equal value. They have the same value, but they might belong in different numbers. So sometimes you're going to see a number that needs some help from the neighbor and you might trade some amounts. You might trade the value from one number to another. So now it's time for us to practice. I'm going to give you two equations. The first one is going to be addition. The second one is going to be subtraction. I'm going to ask you to pause the video when you see the equation and try to solve that on your own. So if you don't have a piece of paper or a pencil near you, just pause the video right now, run around your room, run around your house, make sure you have something that you can write on. And I want you to try to solve that equation by yourself. After you solve the equation by yourself and you found the answer, you can hit play again and we are going to solve the equation one more time together. I'm going to be solving the problem with you, okay? So make sure you have all the materials and here's the first equation. Great, you hit play, which means you already finished solving the problem, you found your answer. So now it's my turn. I'm going to solve that equation and hopefully we can compare the sum. We can compare the answer at the end. Okay, so I have the first equation right in front of me and it's time to solve it. I'm going to try to use all the words that we learned or we just reviewed right now to make sure that I really understand what those words mean. So I have an addition equation. I see the plus sign. So I know I have two addends. This is the first addend. This is the second addend. And I'm looking for the sum. I'm looking for the answer. Before I actually start solving this equation, I have to stack those numbers up. And when I stack numbers up, I always pay attention at the place value. So I see that both numbers have hundreds, tens, and ones. So I have to make sure that when I'm stacking those numbers up, the hundreds goes with the hundreds, tens with tens, and ones with ones. So let's do that right now. The first number is 436. The second number is 216. So I'm going to have the hundreds with the hundreds, tens, with tens, ones, with ones. Beautiful. And I'm going to add my plus sign. Now I'm ready to start. I also know that I always, always, always start at my ones place. So I always have to make sure that I start with the ones. So if I look at my stacked up numbers, I see that on the ones place, I have six plus six. Well, I know that six plus six equals 12, but I also know that I cannot put two digits here underneath. I have to make sure that I only put one digit. If I look at this place value, I know that those are ones. This is the ones place value. So in this number 12, I have two digits. One of them represents ones. The other one represents tens. So I'm going to put two on the bottom here because that's my ones. And the number that represents tens goes all the way on the tens place value. So now I have the one on the top and the two on the bottom. You know how to do that? That's called regrouping. I'm regrouping my numbers to make sure that they all stay on the place value they belong to. So now I can look at my tens place value and I can add those numbers. One and three equals four. Four and one equals five. So I have five on the tens place and now I can look at my hundreds place. Four plus two equals six. You don't have to cross the numbers up. That's how I like to do. My brain really likes to cross things up. So I, I'm very visual. I can see things as I do them. So that's why I'm crossing them up, but you don't have to do that. So my sum is going to be 652. So that's the answer to my addition equation. I hope that's the sum that you found when you solved that by yourself. So how was it? Did you find the same answer I found? I hope so, and if you didn't, that's okay. We are going to have other chances to practice, just make sure to remember all the rules when it comes to addition. Now it's time for us to practice subtraction, and just a heads up, you are going to have to regroup again. So this is the subtraction equation. Go ahead, pause the video, and try to answer that by yourself. Great, did you find your difference? I hope so, now it's my turn. I'm going to write my equation down and I'm going to solve that subtraction problem. Hopefully, we are going to find the same answer, the same difference. 
Okay, it's time for us to solve our subtraction equation. So I have two numbers here, 278 minus 192, and I'm looking for the difference. I'm looking for the answer to the subtraction problem. Okay, as we did with the addition equation, the first step is stack it up. And as I'm stacking it up, I'm really looking at the place value. So the first number is always the big number on a subtraction, on a subtraction equation. 278 and then I'm going to write the second number hundreds with hundreds tens with tens ones with ones beautiful and I'm going to put the subtraction symbol which is the minus as you know I always start at the ones place so if I look at my ones place 8 take away 2 8 minus 2 I know it's equals 6 now I'm going to my tens place. Seven, take away nine. Mm, I have a problem there. If I have seven, can I give nine away? I do not have enough. So this seven right here needs some help. I need to go to my neighbor on the hundreds place and get some, some numbers to help me out. So the two is going to become one and it's going to pass 10. 100 equals 10 groups of 10. So it's going to pass 10 to the 7. So 7 plus 10, the 7 becomes a 17 now. So do I have enough now? I think so. 17 take away 9 equals 8. And now I can go to my hundreds place. I don't have a 2 anymore. I have a 1. 1 take away 1 equals 0. So did I find my difference? Yes. My difference is going to be 86. I hope that's the same difference that you found when you solve this equation by yourself. Did you find the same difference? I hope so. I hope you remember all the subtraction rules that you learned so far and you were able to find the same answer, the same difference that Mr. Machado did. So now it's time for our exit ticket. Today we have a different exit ticket. My goal with this exit ticket is to make sure that you know how to use all the important math words we learn when it comes to subtraction and addition. I want to make sure you can sound like a mathematician. So first, you are going to have to solve a problem that involves addition and subtraction. And after you do that, you are going to write a sentence explaining how did you solve the problem. And that's your chance to use all the important words that we just reviewed on this video. Here's the math problem you're going to solve. It's a two-step word problem. What does that mean? You have to do two different things to find the final answer. One of them is going to be addition. The other one is going to be subtraction. So let me read the problem for you. Minion Steward loves bananas. He had 28 bananas. When he heard about the quarantine, he decided to buy 14 more bananas. How many bananas does he have now? Write and solve the equation. So your job is to solve this equation. He had 28 bananas. He decided to buy 14 more. What do you have to do with those two numbers? Write your equation and solve it. After you figure out that final number, you're going to read the second part of the problem. Read with me. The next day, me and Tom decided to cook banana pancakes for everyone and he used 18 bananas. How many bananas are left? Write and solve the equation. So again, your job is to figure out the equation and to find the answer. How many bananas did we have to start with? How many bananas were used? And if we are using bananas, which operation am I going to use? Is that going to be add or take away, plus or minus? Addition or subtraction? It's your decision, it's your choice. So make sure that you think about this problem, make sure that you write your equation and you remember how to regroup when you're solving it. And now comes the fun part. You solve the problem, now it's time to write about it. You are going to use all the expert math words that you just reviewed and now are fresh in your memory to talk about how did you solve the problem? What did you do? Which steps did you take? So you are going to write three different sentences using those words. There is a word bank, and your job is to use at least four of those words when you're writing about your problem. So here's the second part. Write three sentences to explain the steps you took to solve the problem. Use at least four words from the word box. The words are plus, some, addition, minus, difference, subtraction, 
equation, regroup, operation. So that's it. Your assignment is on Google Classroom. Make sure you go to your own Google Classroom, you open the assignment, solve it on a piece of paper, write down your equation, and then write a little sentence explaining how did you solve the problem. That's it for today, my friends. I hope you stay home and safe, and I'll see you guys next time with another video. Take care.